Hi, Year 10s. Uh, we're going to have a look at some surds now, okay? So just to remind you, remember a surd is a number under a square root sign that doesn't have a nice answer. So the square root of 3 is like a long decimal answer that goes on forever, so it is a surd. The square root of 9 is not a surd because it equals 3, okay? So a surd is a number that yeah, ends up going on forever, okay? So let's have a look at how to deal with some of them. So let's say we have root 2 times root 5. Now remember, all you do is ignore the sign, just 5 times 2. That's it. It's just root 10. Uh, you can't simplify that anymore because you can't do a square root of 10 and none of the factors of 10 can be square rooted. The only factors of 10 are 2 and 5 or 10 and 1 and none of those can be square rooted. So we just leave it as it is. All right, what if we had something that looked a little more like this though? Let's put some numbers on the outside, okay? So 4 root 6 times 3 root 10. Same thing applies. Um, I'm probably not going to have enough room if I write that big. What you need to do is multiply the bits on the outside together. So we've got 4 and we've got 3. So we'll put those bits together. Then we're going to multiply the bits inside the square root signs together as well. Remember, you've got to do them separately, okay? So we end up with 12 root 60. Now, if you stop there, you would sort of only get half marks because you haven't simplified it. This third is not in its simplest form. What you need to think about is what are some factors of 60 that I could square root. So this is where uh, knowing your times tables really comes in handy. And if you don't know your times tables that well, well, you're just going to have to do an awful lot of trial and error to try and figure this out. Um, you can find some smaller factors, but then you could keep going. So if you find that your next stage you can also find other factors, then just keep going until you can't find any more. I know that you could divide this into 4 and 15. Now, the only reason we divide it into further factors is if one of these numbers can be square rooted. You can't square root 15, but you can square root 4. The square root of 4 is 2. So if I pull the 4 out of this square root sign, I actually have to make it a 2 because I'm now saying the square root of 4 is 2. Okay, so I've still got the 12. I'm now pulling a 2 out of it. So I multiply it and I'm left with 15 in there. Okay, so what am I left with? Oops, not what I wanted to do. 2 times 12 is 24 and we've still got 15 in there. Okay, so that's all you have to do for that. Um, let's look at some more things. Okay, so let's look at how we can... Uh, Put things back into an entire third. So if I gave you this and said make it an entire third, actually, I'll, I'll, I wanted to make that five. Anyway, um, let's say that I said make this into an entire third. Do you remember what entire third means? It means that, oops, there goes my phone. Um, I want it to go, everything go back under the square root sign, okay? So if I want to put the 4 under here, I can't just stop going off phone. Uh, I want to make it, I actually can't just make it a 4. I need to put it under the square root sign, which means I need to square it. Because if you brought the 16 out, it would become a 4. 4 squared is 16, the square root of 16 is 4, okay? Then you just do 5 times 16 is 80, all right? So that's how you turn things back into an entire third. Let's look at some division. Let's say I have 8 root 12 divided by 4 root 3. This is exactly the same as the timesing one we did before. Okay, so all you, why do I keep saying okay? Why, what you need to do is do the outside bits together and the inside bits together. So the outside bits, 8 divided by 4, and the inside bits are 12 over 3. So 8 divided by 4 is 2, and 12 divided by 3 is 4. Now we're not really finished yet because you can simplify this further. What is the square root of 4? Well, it's 2. So we can actually pull that out of the square root sign. So 2 times 2 is 4. Now the reason that we're making it times, some people are still sort of forgetting this occasionally. The reason it's times is because remember if there's no sign it means times. So this whole thing here means 2 times the square root of 4. If the square root of 4 is 2, 2 times the square root of 4 is the same as 2 times 2, which is actually 4, okay? So please try and remember to do the outside bits together and the inside bits together. Oh, before I turn the page, one of the things that we can look for is 
looking for easy things, okay? Let's say I gave you this. Instead of multiplying the inside bits together, the first thing you should always try and look for is can I square root any of the numbers I've got? Which is sort of what we got to at the last stage in this last question because we could square root 4. To begin with here, we can just square root the numbers we've already got. Square root of 25 is 5. Square root of 49 is 7. So 5 times 7 is 35. And that's the answer. If you multiplied these two numbers together, you would find that the square root of those two numbers multiplied together is 35. So you'd still get the same answer. But why go through all the trouble? Just try and recognize anything to begin with that you can already square root. All right, one more thing. Let's look at how we simplify something. All right, so let's say I give you this and say simplify it. What you need to do is look for factors. So what can I turn this into where one of the factors can be square rooted? Okay, now let's look at all the numbers that can be square rooted. You don't just want any factors because what's the point? There's no point in dividing it by 2 because you can't square root 2 and you can't square root 120. So that's sort of a bit of a waste of time. So not all the factors are going to help you. What are things that can be square rooted? Well, let's go through them all. 2 squared, 3 squared, 4 squared, 5 squared, 6 squared, 7 squared. Whoa, I got ahead of myself. 8 squared, etc, 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 right? So 2 squared is 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, 64, you know, if you kept going, 81, 100, you know, that's 9 squared, 10 squared, keep going as much as you like. So what we're going to do is we're going to look for factors of 240 that includes one of these numbers that can be square rooted. So this is where a bit of trial and error comes in. The better you are at factors and division and multiplication, the easier this will be. This is why you need to learn your times tables. So after a bit of trial and error, you would discover that 15 times 16 is 240. So which one of these are we pulling out? The 16. So what does it become? Square root of 16 is 4, and we're left with 15. Okay, so 4 root 15 is the same as root 240. Sometimes with really big numbers, it might look scarier, but sometimes it's really easy things you can find. Let's say I gave you square root of 600. That is super easy because 100 is always square rootable. So 6 times 100, square root of 100 is 10, root 6, okay? So look for numbers that, for factors of whatever this big number is, that can be square rooted. So 2 squared, 3 squared, 4 squared, blah, 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 all of that stuff. Good luck.